take a look at this div. Seems totally normal, right? Like there's nothing here that seems particularly suspicious. That's just renders HTML and you're good to go. I have some bad news. You should probably never do this outside of JSX. There's a reason for this, and it's annoying. You might already know that self-closing tags are a lie, but many of you probably don't. I say that because I didn't when I filmed my HTML tier list video, which HR. I don't like that it's not self-closing. That I hate. The fact that you just do this and there's no closing tag. I feel like I should deduct points for that. It is self-closing, but self-closing should have a closing. People are saying I have an issue with HTML and I'm too JSX pilled. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I am what I am. But honestly, after that, I felt kind of dumb. It seemed like something that everyone should understand, but I didn't. And I, I didn't like that feeling. So I've been writing this code for a while and obviously I'm very JSX pilled. Regardless, I had expectations here and those expectations weren't met. At this moment though, I feel significantly less dumb because somebody who's inarguably much better at the web than me just ran into the same thing. This is a PR I just saw from Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte, who just discovered the same behavior, which, what, what? Yeah, describe the bug. I'm a little shaken up. For as long as I've been programming, I thought that this self-closing div was shorthand for this, div, close div. Turns out it's not. Self-closing tags just aren't a thing in HTML. The syntax for that at the end is simply ignored by browsers altogether. In other words, this here is equivalent to doing that, where hello is inside the div, not outside of it. Svelte, however, treats this syntax as div, close div. For a framework that prides itself in being a superset of HTML, this is a glaring error. The yes and no. I know the goal of Svelte is to be like HTML++, but if the guy who made the HTML++ framework thought that this is how it worked, that's a fault of the language, not a fault of the individual, and certainly not a fault of the framework. I am very much on team, it should do this, and I think the framework should as well. I'm okay with rejecting the way the browser does things. Before we see what Svelte's plans are, we should take a look at the blog post that's referenced here, because it's a phenomenal post, and as you guys might have seen, Prime already reacted to this. The case against self-closing tags in HTML. Let's talk about this syntax. Input type equals text, br image, cool. All self-closing that we've seen and probably written a bunch. You've seen the syntax on my blog because it's what Prettier does. And I really like Prettier. However, I don't think closing tags, self-closing specifically, are a good thing. First up, the facts. Enter XHTML. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, the W3C had a real thing for XML. And they thought that it should replace HTML syntax. There were good reasons for that. At the time, there was no HTML parsing spec, so when it came to anything non-trivial, you'd often end up with four browser engines interpreting the same HTML document in four different ways. On the other hand, XML has a fully defined parser. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, JSX isn't HTML and JS. It looks like that, but it's really XML in JS because XML and HTML are so similar looking that it's a pretty easy transition and you can map your mental model from this pseudo XML thing to HTML and back and forth relatively easily. And it would have honestly been cool to have XML as the standard for the browser, but HTML is pretty cool overall. But it would have been a huge challenge to do this all at once. So in 2000, XHTML 1.0 became the recommendation and it proposed writing HTML in a way that was compatible with both existing HTML parsers as well as XML parsers which meant instead of this, you'd write our good old XML version crap at the top, doc type HTML public, yada, yada. Then HTML, XML and S is the URL for the XML standard that you're using. XML languages EN as well as languages EN. Instead of option value foo selected, be option value equals foo selected equals selected. This would be selected equals true. Ah, oh, I'm thinking in JSX too hard. I guess selected would map to the string previously, which is really dumb behavior. Yeah, you get the point. I'm very happy that we moved to this style. Because in XML, attributes require values and they must be quoted with double quotes. And also, instead of this, you'd write self-closing. Because in XML, tags have to explicitly close. And XML is a shorthand for self-closing tags. Yes, I like this. You know what, let's do a quick poll before we go too much further. Do you like self-closing tags? Yes, no, indifferent. Actually really curious what you guys think. In XML, it would generally be formatted like this, without the space before the slash. I like the space, but that's fine. Basically Navigator 4 couldn't cope with... <laughs> Never forget Firefox is built from the ashes of Netscape and Netscape was built from the ashes of bad ideas, including but not limited to JavaScript. So uh, yeah, the company that invented JS, also not knowing how to parse XML, this all lines up with my expectations, where the slash immediately followed an attribute. So the spec recommends a space before the slash. It's funny that the spec long term now enforces this because one browser didn't like it. Good old days. But 
Browsers didn't care. These rules were purely for XML parsers. And because documents were being served as HTML, if you're that one guy who served their site as XML, HTML plus XML, you don't need to tell me. <laughs> Is that one guy in my chat? Because if so, let me know. But yeah, for the rest of the world, these syntactical extras were ignored. With option selected equals selected, the value was ignored. So option selected equals empty string worked as well. As would option selected equals false. <laughs> The false would be ignored. Since you passed a value here, it's now gonna select that option, great. But for consistency, it was decided that repeating the attribute name was a good idea. I hate that, I hate that so much. If you forgot to quote an attribute, the browser didn't complain. It just got on with the job of rendering the page. If you ended a tag with self-closing tag, the browser saw it as a parsing error and ignored it. And that's where I start to take issues with this. Oh boy, speaking of which, let's take a look at our poll so far. People really like self-closing tags, which checks out. I really like self-closing tags, so this is kind of heartbreaking to me. I'm gonna hit yes there, but yeah. Majority of the people here seem to like self-closing tags. And if you wanna be able to sway polls like this, make sure you watch live. I'm live every Wednesday around 1 p.m. Pacific time, filming stuff like this. Cool. Let's take a look at these code examples. Here's a BR. The BR is closed, the text isn't inside of it. But also, this BR is closed, the text isn't inside. Here's where it gets confusing. This div is open, the text is inside the div. This is where things get problematic. Because the browsers ignore the self-closing syntax, they just see this as an open tag. In XML, div with a closing self tag there would be a self-closing div, but in HTML, it won't be. In HTML, it isn't the syntax that closes the BR, it's the BR. Because BR is a self-closing tag in and of itself. You can't pass a child to BR, you can't wrap something in a BR, you just have a BR. Because of that, what you put here doesn't matter. You can do with or without the end. This does literally nothing. But it gets confusing with a div because we read that and we say, oh, this is a self-closing div. It's not, because this part does literally nothing. Yeah, yeah. In XML, div would be a self-closing div, but not in HTML. Yep, 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 you just read all that, cool. But yeah, div isn't on the, the list of special elements that can't have children, ones that can't automatically self-close. What would happen if we screw with that a bit though? Uh, let's go to CodePen. I have div, hi, div, closed, cool. BR, hello. BR. Let's take a look at what the browser thinks of this. Yeah, it just parses that out and they're no longer open and closed tags. They're just new lines that are there. That makes sense. Where things get a little crazy is if we do a div here, let's just give this a basic class equals test. Hello again. And we'll give dot test background color red. Why is that affecting this? The reason is this is still an open closed div. This doesn't close itself. It's wrapping hello again. Yeah. And also this basically just gets deleted, which is fun too. So much is wrong here. I, I Normally I'm here to bitch about CSS and JS, but I guess today we're bitching about HTML. Let's take a look at this part here. So this blog post is phenomenal, by the way. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Jake Archibald writes lots of great stuff like this. Exit XHTML. The transitional phase of XHTML ends with XHTML 1.1. At this point, the spec required the document to be served and parsed as XML. XML parsing rules were well defined, except for when invalid syntax was encountered. The best thing browsers could do there is just show an error page, else we'd be back to browsers just making stuff up, each browser behaving differently. And to that, browsers said, no thanks. This is the important bit. Browsers could have standardized on XML, but nobody wanted to be the browser to say, no, fuck you, you can't use this old web page. You have to update your code. Well, they didn't exactly say no, they support it and they still do today. Here's a valid XHTML document served as application XHTML XML. And here's an invalid one. Let's take a look at those quick. Yeah, here's an XML doc. That's cool. Everything works as expected. So next doesn't look particularly different. If I look at the response here, just throw this in my editor. Yeah, pretty bog standard XML. Theoretically, you could put self-closing stuff in here and it should actually work. Good to know. Cool. And this Wrong one. The page contains the following errors. Fail to parse queue name ASP, error parsing attribute name. So here, oh, that's just what it renders. So let's again go to sources and grab the actual page content. Cool, yeah, this one has the ASP colon syntax, which is valid in HTML, but is not valid here, hence the issues. But browsers didn't see it as a feature. Makes sense. Ask yourself. If you're visiting the website for your local doctor's surgery to figure out what hours they're open, what browser is best? The one that displays the opening hours of the surgery or the one that displays an XML parsing error message? Very fair point. No browser wanted to be the one to show the errors because that becomes the worst browser on the web almost instantaneously. One of the great things about browsers is that they're error tolerant and browsers weren't interested in giving that up. Another really fair point that I don't think we give the web enough credit for, websites from old, old times still work great today as long as they're not using Flash. XHTML was eventually abandoned because a new thing came along that browsers were happier with. Enter HTML5. 
HTML5 entered the scene in 2008. It's been that long since HTML5. God, I am so old. That hurts. We're at 16 years now. Ugh. Ugh. I feel gross. One major thing that it introduced was a parsing spec. Woo, very big deal. There was no spec for how to parse HTML until that point in time. And unlike the XML parsing spec, it actually detailed what the browser should do when they encounter weird and invalid markup. It did away with all the XML requirements introduced in XHTML, and it leaned into the looseness of HTML parsers that existed at the time. It does handle self-closing syntax specifically, but only to specifically ignore it. <laughs> so it does have a handler for it, but the handler is to throw it away. Enter SVG in HTML. Oh boy, this is where things are gonna get real fun and spicy. In the early 2010s, the ability to include SVGs in HTML was specced and started appearing in browsers. Although SVG is an XML format, when it's embedded in an HTML doc, it's parsed by the HTML parser. However, to increase compatibility with copy-pasted SVG content, when the HTML parser is within an SVG tag, it switches to a foreign content mode, where the self-closing syntax is actually meaningful. Yeah, so we have this group syntax where if we put something in a group, it's in it, but if we self-close the group outside, then this will be outside. Sure that there's some real use case for this, but I'm struggling to imagine one. Other foreign content, such as MathML, behaves the same. Oh god, why does MathML keep coming up? There's nothing I want to escape more. Ugh. And that's where things are today. The closing syntax is mostly meaningless in HTML documents, with foreign content being the exception. Let's see what his opinions are. Although, as an industry, we generally discarded most of XHTML requirements, self-closing tag decoration seems to have persisted, despite being a remnant from a spec that was abandoned over 10 years ago. Folks even include the space before the slash, which was added for compatibility with a browser engine from a, the previous millennium. This is a very hilarious detail. I think it's a confusing relic from a time past, and I don't think tools like Prettier should be pushing it. To make my case, I'll respond to counter arguments that came up in a Twitter thread. We can look at the Twitter thread, but I want to see what the replies are here first. Self-closing tags make it easier to read and are helpful for newcomers. You don't need to remember which tags are self-closing. Outside of foreign content, elements that self-close will always self-close. All other elements won't. I I don't like this response. I, I'll give a different counter argument here. First off, I don't think the self-closing things will always self-close is the point that this person is trying to make. The point is that the code is more explicit that this thing closes, which is handy. And I think that's why Prettier does it, because it indicates when something is self-closing that it is closed. The issue that he's highlighting here, though, is important, which is that technically this doesn't do anything. And technically, this also doesn't do anything. So the HTML showing different syntax when the behavior isn't any different can be confusing. But theoretically, if I was trying to teach HTML to somebody who didn't know it, and I was showing them snippets, I would have the slash on BR just to indicate that this thing is closed and like it isn't apparent that wraps something. So I'm 50-50 on this. On one hand, since the browser doesn't actually use it, it can be misleading. But on the other hand, since the thing it's indicating is actually valuable and that this doesn't have a closing tag, I think it's a useful teaching mechanism, especially since I teach a lot of React. I found this to be really handy in a language where it's actually honored. Let's see what he has to say, though. The examples of the closing tags above simply don't do anything. The only way you know that input is acceptable and div isn't is learning and remembering which elements self-close. It sucks, but that's the way it is. Yeah, yeah. I think that as long as we all acknowledge that this sucks, we should be doing our best to work with and build tools that do this the right way. Because let's be realistic. How many people are actually writing an HTML file in like an HTML page, like going to a .html file, making changes to it, and then shipping that to the web? Everyone has build tools of some degree at this point. And most of us are actually writing our HTML in other languages, be it templates like Handlebars or JSX with React and Solid or the craziness that Astro is going through turning JSX into HTML with their own syntactic sugar on top. Like... I think it's okay to leave behind something that we agree sucks if we have better syntax that compiles to the right behaviors. But does the self-closing tag have to work to be useful? This is what I was saying. Surprise, he is going to make my arguments for me. Code comments don't work. Very fair points. Just like self-closing tags, they're an indication they might be misleading, but that isn't a good argument for removing code comments. Yep. I actually really like the comparison to code comments. It's, it's showing intent from the developer. The problem with self-closing tag is that it doesn't look like a comment. And worse, it doesn't always behave like one either, due to the rules around foreign content. Also a fair critique. If a comment could change what the code does, fair. But to be fair, this can't change what the code does. So I guess they are alike in that way. But the fact that it looks like not a comment is a real counter argument. I think that's particularly bad for newcomers. Hmm. Imagine you've never seen an image tag before. You see, unlike other elements, it doesn't have a closing tag. Debuggers and validators don't complain about it, suggesting there's something particular about this element you need to learn. It doesn't need to close. It self-closes, and it's particular in that behavior. 
Now imagine you've never seen it with the self-closing before. You look up this new syntax you've discovered and learn that it means the tag is self-closing. At this point, why wouldn't you assume iframe is self-closing too, or that image source slash image is valid? Given this, I'm particularly sad the MDN uses self-closing tags in beginner-facing documentation. Okay, so counter argument here. If fucking MDN is using self-closing tags in their examples, then we have already agreed. The browser should have done this. Why don't we just do this in our tools now? If MDN uses self-closing tags, we should use self-closing tags. This actually just hardcore blackpilled me on this. Oh boy, let's see where we go from here. Is he sitting with JSX? Yeah, JSX and HTML are different formats and JSX is better. Fight me, bros. They are consistent with each other. Pretending they're consistent is misleading. The above HTML renders as hello world. Cool, yep. The above JSX renders as hello world. The formats work differently. So we have this here in HTML where the text would be inside the div, but in JSX, it would be outside the div because JSX is competent unlike HTML. Yeah, cool, they're different, but JSX is doing something much more logical here. The above JSX produces a div with a class attribute. Okay, that's more of a React thing than a JSX thing, but it's a really common way to use JSX. Eh, React's the most common way, yes, but Solid does this differently. Astro does this differently. Every other JSX implementation I've seen does this differently. So, yeah. I don't think there's an argument for consistency here. Despite visual similarities, they're different formats that work differently. It means I can parse HTML with an XML parser. Call me some sort of purist, but if I want to parse HTML, I'll use an HTML parser. <laughs> Man, we were doing so well. We were agreeing real hard. I wouldn't try and write JSON so it could be parsed by a YAML parser. So I don't see why I'd do the same with HTML and XML. For those who don't know, you can embed JSON in YAML and it just works. So funny that he's bringing this up, but fair point. There are many great HTML parsing libs out there for almost every language. And since the parser is specified, the results are consistent. I think if you had to put HTML that's like too new, so to speak, through a really, really minimal transform layer to remove these self-closing syntaxes, that's fine. I don't really agree with this point. I saw a chat message I want to respond to from Cooper here. If we change it now, 99% of BR tags would clone themselves. Eh, my counter argument here would be the thing that we want to change isn't that things that use BR and stuff need to now be self-closing. Like I wouldn't want to enforce in like HTML parsers that like to use BR, you now have to do that. That I wouldn't like. Anything that's on that magic list of automatically self-closing things, those should behave exactly the same. But if somebody's doing this, where they're closing a tag and actually expect whatever they did here to apply to the text, that is broken. I just can't imagine a page where this was done intentionally. And if it was that breaking, I would argue is fine. I'm not arguing for requiring self-closing tags on all HTML of self-closable elements. What I'm arguing for is that if you use the syntax, it always self-closes. That's my argument. I don't think we should break old sites. I think we should support self-closing syntax so people writing it don't get too confused. More points from here. It makes the markup faster to parse. I've heard this a few times, and I think it comes from the assumption that the more information you give, the better the processor can optimize or something. But let's compare the two. I don't want to get deep into parsing stuff. I'm sure that just ignoring the line is fine, so whatever. Especially for like BR examples. But where this gets... Okay, actually, now that I'm reading this, I actually fully disagree. Because of the weirdness of like the div example, having to handle that is obnoxious. So I guess if you just always throw away the slash, cool. But if you actually want a self-closing thing, it would actually help the parser for sure. So I don't agree with that point. Man, it looks pretty. Sure, that's subjective. I thought the closing syntax looked ugly the first time I worked on a code base that required it, but I got used to it. I also got used to missing it out. Interesting wording. That's, eh. That's what he means by that, but sure. If prettiness is the goal, hey, we could use input type equals text. Yeah. I would love that. I would love to be able to use emojis more in my code, but nothing fucking supports it. There's nothing I want more than to have like const heart equals hello world. But sadly, uh, in basically every language, you can't define a variable as an emoji. Unexpected token illegal. Yeah. Rip us. Yeah. But seriously, I think aesthetics should take a backseat given how this leading this syntax says. What if it wasn't misleading though? That's my whole point. Prettier should be more opinionated. I respect prettier's our, our way or the highway approach. Yes, it's phenomenal but he doesn't think it's consistent here. Interesting. It will change BR to self-closing BR, but it won't do anything with self-closing div. In fact, if you give it a div, it'll reformat it with the space. I think Prettier should either drop the self-closing syntax in cases where it's meaningless to the parser, or they should fix cases where it's actually misleading. Like this should be auto-formatted to this, similar to how it already treats unclosed tags. You could convince me on that for sure. The issue is that JSX, and I'm assuming there's a lot of overlap in that parser. In fact, can anybody confirm that Prettier's HTML parser is sharing some amount of logic with their JSX parser? Because if I'm right about that, this is a terrible point. And if I'm wrong about that, this is a phenomenal point. Function is probably JSX. <laughs> 
They use a regex to detect if a file has JSX in it or not. That's great. I love that. Love that for us. But how do we actually parse it? Styled components.js. Lol. They have a whole styled components formatter. Cool. So this is the file that actually does the parsing. Type defs. J6 expands the children from inside out instead of outside in. Da da da. Okay. So if I'm reading this correctly, it seems like it is very different from their HTML implementation because they have a whole separate source language HTML, which is parsed entirely separately. So my theory that there was some overlap here appears to be uh, not a thing. Function print end of opening tag. This is in the JSX. If node self-closing, we do that. Cool. So here's the actual place where they uh, set the self-closing tag. Good to know. But yeah, this is different code. This is in a separate JSX.js file. So this is not the problem of the HTML parser. So it was a fun deep dive. I learned a lot about how Prettier works internally. But uh, apparently the HTML uses Angular's parser. Yeah. Good to know. Well, I've learned a lot through that. So yeah, theoretically, this is a fair point then that you could fix that in just HTML and not in JSX. But again, the final option, the one I am most interested in is, could we just allow HTML closing tags everywhere? A major part of the problem is that the self-closing tag is sometimes ignored and sometimes isn't, within the same HTML document even. Could we have an option to switch the parsing rules so that this is always meaningful, as in div is actually self-closing? I filed an issue for this, but I suspect it's a no-go due to incompatibility with existing libraries, particularly security-sensitive ones. Is it though? I am fully in support of this issue, and this is again the solution I recommended. It looks like it was closed though. Why was this closed? I think we shouldn't introduce new parsing flags that change parsing behavior. They cause cross-site scripting issues. Yeah. Trying to in my head parse how that could be a thing. Okay, so there's there's a contrived way to do that. Annoying, but fine. Yeah. Self-closing, declaring self-closing mode on a page and using a library which does not support or detect it will expose authors' vulnerabilities. Yada, yada, cool. I wish this was a thing. It's not going to be a thing. There's a lot of bickering on this issue. I want to see what Svelte's doing, though, because that's why we're here in the first place. Svelte was making this mistake because even the great Rich Harris had this same misunderstanding. So uh, let's take a look here. What should we do? We being Svelte and Rich Harris. I think the right thing to do is disallow self-closing non-void HTML tags. This only applies to HTML, not other namespaces. This is a breaking change, but the alternatives are continue to parse HTML incorrectly or parse HTML correctly, treating divs as just div, which is also a breaking change, but one that would be nightmarish to debug. That's the other reason I hate this, because if you do have this, it's so annoying to figure out what just happened, especially if it worked the way that you would expect before no longer does because HTML sucks. Yeah, that would be obnoxious. Ideally, we would also disallow self-closing void elements like input rather than input closed. But whether or not this is realistic depends on whether Prettier's current habit of adding an unnecessary self-closing tag to void elements prevents us from doing that. Repro. Here's him doing an example of how this works, as well as in a Svelte component where this behavior is different, where uh, we select the div and then log the content. In this example, we get hello because this hello element is a child of div, which is dumb. But then in this code, which is a little more reasonable, hello is not a child of this div. So we don't get the console log results here because there is no content of that div. In the first case, hello is logged. In the second, the empty string is logged. Yeah, severity, annoyance. <laughs> I hate this. I hate that we're so stuck on old standards and the result is so much pain. But I, at the absolute least, feel a good bit better knowing that I'm not the only one. Seeing Rich Harris run into the same, like, what the fuck moment that I ran into months ago is a bit of a relief. I hope y'all understand that as normalized as all of these things on the web may seem when we talk about them here, all of us are missing some gaps in our knowledge. Even the people who made HTML themselves clearly left a dumb gap here. And now, for decades to come, we'll be making dumb mistakes as well. So, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Should they fix this? Should they not? And until next time, peace nerds.